Hi, Sophie here. So today I am going to show you how to cook the perfect broccoli from both a gourmet and a nutritional point of view. So the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how to prepare, how to chop your broccoli. And this is the most important step. And you're going to find out why in just a second. And then we're going to go on to exactly how to cook your broccoli to utter perfection. So let's get started. So the reason why it's so important to chop your broccoli, and in fact any cruciferous vegetable, is from a nutritional point of view, and many of you know I am a holistic nutritionist, so for me it's all about maximizing the disease fighting compounds that are in your cruciferous veggies. They are powerful, my friends. We are talking disease fighting compounds. These compounds will literally help fight breast cancer, colon cancer. They, I can't underscore this more, but you've got to understand how to chop because you're not going to get those nutrients if you don't chop your cruciferous veggies properly. So what you want to do is you want to give all your cruciferous veggies, whether it's a broccoli or a cauliflower or a kale, a good chop at least 30 minutes prior to cooking or prior to eating. Now you can see here I've got two different kinds of broccoli. Both of them I love. There's your regular head of broccoli, all organic. I always eat organic when it comes to most veggies, but very specifically uh, broccoli because I eat it almost every day. And this is tender stem broccoli, also known as broccolini. Now this I love because it is a slightly sweeter in taste. The stems are super, super um, tender so you can chop the stems up and eat them. They're just sweet. They're almost like asparagus. They're so, so good. So either way, whatever kind of broccoli you're using, you are going to give the whole uh, broccoli head and stems a super good chop. Now, even if I'm using a regular broccoli head with the broccoli stems, I use the entire plant. Um, stem and flower because you um, it's a shame not to you're going to waste a lot of um, beautiful um, food if you don't now with this uh, slightly tougher stem I cube it into little tiny chunks because you it takes a little longer to cook um, and with the uh, tender stem broccoli I probably won't cut it into such little chunks I'll just keep them about this long now Remember, you also need to chop all the way up. So with a floret, and a lot of people will just cut the florets off, and this is all they're going to use, just these little um, florets. But again, do not waste the stem. And even if your family only like the little florets, oh, there's a little bit that I'm going to discard there. That sometimes happens with, um, with uh, organic broccoli. Um, just make sure you're chopping. Can you see this? Chop, chop, and chop. Now the reason why I'm doing all this chopping is the chopping action releases something called sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is the disease-fighting compound, my friends, that is going to help prevent you from getting cancer and chronic diseases. But the chopping action releases it, and then it needs to further release and sort of get its legs, as it were, for 30 minutes before you eat it or cook it. All right, so, understood. One more time, because I need you to get this. As a nutritionist, you need to chop all your cruciferous veg veggies, kale, cauliflower, and broccoli, chop it good, and let it sit for a minimum of 30 minutes before you cook it. And we're gonna get onto cooking it in one second. And a little note on food prep here. This is fantastic for food prep because you can chop all your veggies on a Sunday or two or three days prior, all right? Pop them in you know, a glass container, put them in the fridge or however you store them in the fridge. And still, even in the fridge, that sulforaphane, that cancer-fighting compound, is going to continue to release and be perfectly uh, in tune or perfectly ready for you uh, for when you cook it or eat it. All right, so now we're ready to cook. All those nutrients are released. 
Now, I think cookware is the most important thing when it comes to cooking any vegetable, but this I use every single day of my existence, because I already told you that I eat broccoli every single day, or, and or cauliflower and kale. And so this is the workhorse of my kitchen. It's by 360 Cookware, and it is uh, just unequivocally the best pan, particularly for cooking broccoli, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. Um, let me show you kind of the old school cooking of broccoli that used to happen before I had my 360 cookware. And let me show you why I don't like cooking like that anymore. Okay, so old school cooking. This is how my mum used to cook broccoli. Um, in quite a lot of water, you just boil it. And I can already tell that this is a little bit overcooked. So a good way to tell whether your broccoli is uh, rare, is medium rare, or is fully cooked is to use a fork. And I want to show you here, because this has been boiling. For me, that fork goes in rather too easily. For me, that means it's overcooked. If it was one step more overcooked, it would look gray. It wouldn't look bright green, but I've kind of saved it just in time because I don't want to waste this. And then if you wanted it medium, your fork will just go a little way in. And then if you wanted your broccoli, which I like it to be really crisp and to be a little bit rare, um, then the fork will barely, barely go in. It'll be really beautifully crispy. But the main thing I wanted to show you about this is look at the green water. This is nutrients lost in this water. Now, you could steam your broccoli, but honestly, when you steam your broccoli, it's just another steamer basket, it's another pan. I'm going to show you why the 360 uh, pan is, is, I think, the better way to go. So let me tell you the difference. Let me tell you the difference between a 360 pan cooking in 360 cookware and the regular method uh, that I've just shown you. So the first thing is a 360 pan. This, by the way, is the one quart pan. And this is the, the workhorse of my kitchen. I cannot live without it. So 360 cookware is made of three layers of surgical grade stainless steel. That is a big deal because you can get stainless steel pans, but there's a lot of different uh, qualities or grades, I should say, of stainless steel. So this is the best that you can get. So it also employs something called a vapor lock technology. And the vapor lock technology together with the three layers of surgical grade stainless steel make for a cooking experience par none because it'll cook your food, your broccoli, what, veggies, whatever you're putting in there very, very quickly. So it's heat efficient, low heat, cooks extremely quickly with very little water. And that is the really unique thing about this pan. You're going to use very little water. I'm going to show you how in a minute. But before I get to that, we have an amazing deal on this pan for a short time only, or I should say while supplies last. And they're going to go very quickly. So this pan is normally $150. Yes, 360 cookware, because of the quality it's made in America, it's a family-run factory, blah, blah, blah. It is an investment, but it's an investment that you'll have for the rest of your life. So it's normally 150. We are, they, actually 360, have given just my community, just you, this pan for $49.99 while supplies last. Now, if you're watching this video a couple of years from now, we're 2018 now, end of, if you're watching it in 19 or 2020, we may not have this pan at this price, in fact, very unlikely to have it still available, but there may be other deals because I'm so passionate about this cookware line that I'm always like twisting their arm going, please give my community a deal. So check in the description to this video and we'll link up with whatever the very best deal is that I can possibly get you. Okay, let's get to showing off how it cooks. Okay, so I pop my broccoli in the pan. Can you see I've got the little stalks there as well as the floret or the florets. Uh, now I'm going to add my water. So let's just pop that in there. That's about half a cup of water, but you can play with deciding how much you want to add. You sort of get in a groove with your pan, but it's very, very little water as you can see. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put the lid on right from the get-go and I'm going to turn the heat on to high to start off with. All right, so just to start off with. 
and we're gonna just let it heat up for a minute. Now, while it's heating up here, um, I want to also let you know that if you cook for a big family, or if you're a hugely, like you're in your kitchen all the time cooking larger quantities of food, and um, specifically veggies, 360 also do this pan in a two quart and a three quart. I recommend, if you are a very passionate cook, getting all three pans, I really do. Because you'll use, I have all three, and you will use all three. You know, the little one, as I say, is the workhorse of my kitchen. If I'm cooking for myself, or just for me and my daughter, or me and my husband, this is always on my stovetop. But once I get going and I'm cooking bigger meals and I'm doing dinner parties and whatever, that's when my two and my three quart come out because they're very versatile. You don't just cook veggies in and that's a whole nother video, but you can cook kind of all your food in, in the pans. Um, but I just want to let you know, also check underneath the, the video because as I get deals from them to be able to offer to you, we will link to them very clearly underneath this video because I always want you to get a deal. All right, let's see how this is doing. Okay, so now the steam, it is steaming, right? So I'm gonna, first off, I'm gonna turn the heat right down to as low, I don't know if you can see, as it can possibly go. Very, very low heat. You only have that high heat to get the steam going, right? Then, can you see how this is twirling around? And that means that your vapor lock is on, baby, it's happening. I love this twirling thing. All my family are obsessed with it. We all come by and go, whoa! but it's cooking away nicely there. And um, it, you know, it's formed this little lock that it's really pretty difficult to pull off. So we're gonna let it cook now from two to four minutes, depending on how crispy you want your broccoli. For me, it's generally two minutes. It took about a minute to get it to come up to the boil. And um, then I'm gonna do two minutes. So all told, that's three minutes. That for me is the perfect broccoli. If you like your broccoli a little bit more tender, you don't want it quite so crispy, then you might go to three or to four minutes. Again, have fun playing and experimenting with your cookware because it's kind of like Goldilocks cooking broccoli. You've just got to get it to exactly where you love it to be. Okay, so the first thing I did was turn the heat off. You don't want it cooking anymore. Oh my gosh, it looks so tender and beautiful. So I'm just gonna use a pair of tongs. You don't need a colander, honestly. Um, so I'm just gonna use my tongs to take it out and just pop it on a plate like so. And this is really, really quite perfectly cooked. And I'm gonna actually get my little fork here to show you how, this is how I like my broccoli. There. That is kind of medium. Maybe I did a little bit more than I normally do. So that was in total three minutes cooking time. If I wanted a little more crispy, I'd go with two minutes. Okay, so I've transferred it all to a plate now. Just keep in mind that if you're not going to plonk it in an ice bath to stop it cooking, which some people recommend, that's too many steps for me. I haven't got time, I'm a really busy woman. So for me, if I want it to stay super crispy, you may want to reduce the cooking time a little bit more. So as I say, this two minutes maximum cooking time would be perfect for me. Again, experiment, play with it, you'll find your perfect uh, broccoli cooking time. So if you're gonna eat your broccoli right away, straight out of the pan, which I do every single day, I wanna give you some seasoning ideas. Now a lot of chefs will have you put oil back in the pan and start frying it. Um, not a good idea for health reasons because you don't want to heat oil. If you heat olive oil or avocado oil or any oil, you're creating free radicals. You're degrading the oil. So if you want to have a little bit of oil, make sure that it's cold pressed and it stays cold pressed. Plus it retains the beautiful flavor of an expensive oil, olive oil, that you might have invested in. So here are my ideas. The broccoli is still warm. While it's still warm, if I wanna go completely oil-free, then I might just use a little bit of tamari, which is a gluten-free soy sauce, um, and I like the one that has 50% less sodium in it. I almost always put lemon juice on my broccoli because who doesn't love lemon juice? It makes it delicious. Um, as an alternative to a regular salt, I might use a herbed sea salt. Uh, which I love, chili flakes if you want to spice it up a little bit, 
Um, a really, and I'll put links to all of these underneath the video, a really fun idea is Bomacio. This is also a way of going salt free. It's what's used in macrobiotic cookery. And these are sesame seeds. And this particular one by Eden Organic um, has seaweed in it. So seaweed is giving you iodine. And this is a really, really good tip because you're getting your iodine without using iodized table salt. And a lot of us are really trying to reduce the amount of salt in our diet. So that's a really good little tip. And then if you want to give it a little bit of a cheesy spin, you could use a little bit of nutritional yeast on top as well. Or if you really want to go bananas, you can mix all of the above in there. I've already mentioned olive oil. You want to make sure it's cold pressed and um, extra virgin and organic if possible. And just go easy on the oil. If you're using uh, olive oil, you could use a little avocado oil. And my last tip is garlic. So I'm a huge garlic fan because again, as a nutritionist, I understand that there are extra health benefits and immune fighting properties in garlic. It's also a really good uh, prebiotic. So it's good for your gut, it's good for, for your immune system, it's good for your skin. What isn't garlic good for, thank God? But, 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 but it has to be raw. When you cook garlic, Unfortunately, almost all of those benefits are gone. It's still delicious, but they're gone. So this is a really good opportunity for you to get a little bit of raw garlic into your diet. I just chop it up nice and fine, and I'll sprinkle a little bit on my broccoli along with the lemon juice, tamari, whatever else I have to hand. Now, if you are not eating your broccoli right away, if we are talking food prep, then what I do is I'll let this cool, I'll transfer it to a glass container or however you choose to, to store your veggies. It might be in a reusable plastic bag. I try to use glass where possible and keep it in your fridge. Then just before you're ready to serve it, I'm gonna show you what to do. Pop it in a colander and simply pour over a tea kettle of boiling water that will revive it and make it ready for you to season and serve. Okay, so closing thoughts and tips. First off, what about frozen broccoli? Now, a lot of you ask me about frozen foods and typically I don't mind frozen, but if you eat frozen fruits because they're flash frozen as soon as they're picked. And I would actually rather that you had frozen organic berries like blueberries or raspberries or strawberries rather than something that's been sitting in the store for a long time that's lost all its nutrients and it's not organic. However, in the case of broccoli and cauliflower and your cruciferous veggies, don't buy frozen because you're missing out on that chopping, releasing the sulforaphane, the cancer-fighting compounds situation. And that is the most important thing as far as the health benefits are concerned. So no frozen uh, chop, uh, you know, fro frozen florets or broccoli cauliflower or any of the above. Um, I also just wanted to point out that this uh, pan, all these 360 pans, I'm just reminding you, this is the one quart here. There is a two quart, there is a three quart. If you can possibly swing it, get all three. You'll thank me forever. You will never, ever regret it. Remember, we have an amazing, um, I mean, crazy amazing deal on the one quart right now. I wish we had it forever, but it's just not gonna be. But again, we'll put the details of the deals as they come up and as we can get them um, in the description to this video. And also remember that all these 360 pans aren't just for cooking broccoli and cauliflower. You can cook pretty much all of your foods in them and they are so functional and so amazing. And I've been a big fan for, for, for many years. So that's all from me and leave me any questions or comments underneath the video and do check out because I have a lot of other videos on cooking, what I eat in a day, um, you know, I'm a whole food plant based gal um, and I have a lot of nutritional focus videos and then of course all my sort of green skincare. So there's a lot of stuff going on on the gorgeously green channel, which is why you just might want to subscribe so that you don't miss out on the new ones when they are fresh off the press. I'll see you next time. Hi, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, there are hundreds more. And please also visit my blog at sophieuliano.com for detailed reviews, recipes, DIYs, and more.